The crown jewels, priceless, ceremonial, and sacred heart of the British monarchy for over 800 years. Held at the Tower of London, only one man has ever dared to steal them. He's a really contradictory character, and nothing is really as it seems. This is the true story of Colonel Blood and the theft of the crown jewels. Colonel Thomas Blood was born in County Meath, Ireland, in early 1618, the son of a prosperous blacksmith. In 1642, with the outbreak of the English Civil War, Blood initially fights for King Charles I, but would later switch sides to fight for Parliament. And as we shall see, with Colonel Thomas Blood, nothing is quite what it seems. Colonel Thomas Blood is an incredibly charismatic but enigmatic figure as well. In fact, the name Colonel Thomas Blood is potentially not even true. We know that he was probably a captain during the Civil War, but at some time he may have just promoted himself to Colonel. Following the restoration of the British monarchy under King Charles II, Blood was forced to give up land and property, turning his fortunes overnight into ruin and would sow the seeds for Blood's most dastardly plan. So in the 1670s, security wasn't really what it should have been at the Tower of London as far as the Crown Jewels were concerned. They were kept at this time in the Martin Tower. There they were looked after by an aging ex-soldier whose name was Talbot Edwards. His job was to show people the Crown Jewels and if you paid him a bit of money, you could even hold them. So Colonel Blood visits the Tower of London. He is in disguise as a parson with a woman pretending to be his wife who's actually an actress, she pretends to faint while looking at the crown jewels. The lovely Talbot Edwards manages to help her upstairs to his private apartments where his wife looks after her. A few days later, Blood returns to the tower, bearing gifts for Edwards' wife. Colonel Blood suggests that he has a nephew who might be an eligible suitor for Talbot Edwards' daughter. This gives him an excuse to visit on the 9th of May 1671, that fateful date when he arrived at the Tower of London to try and steal the Crown Jewels. On the morning of the meeting outside the Martin Tower, Blood, accosted by his son and two other accomplices, Robert Pirrett and Richard Halliwell, meet with treasure keeper Talbot Edwards. Due to an earlier than planned arrival, Blood suggests to Edwards to show himself, his son and Pirrett the Crown Jewels. Poor Talbot Edwards didn't know that they were armed to the teeth. They had daggers and swords hidden in their canes, pistols, and they also had hammers all secreted about their person. And once they're downstairs, they attack poor Talbot Edwards. And having incapacitated him, they then start to plan to steal the crown jewels. Robert Perrot picks up the orb and very unceremoniously stuffs it down his breeches. The crown is taken by Colonel Blood himself and he beats it with a hammer in order to hide it in his cloak. And they're just about to saw the scepter in half when suddenly their luck changes because they're alerted by their friend upstairs to say that Talbot Edwards' son, who's a soldier who's been away for many years, has miraculously just returned. So they start to panic at this point. They decide they're gonna to have to leave very quickly. And as they do, Talbot Edwards manages to sort of free himself from his bones, make some noise. And actually it's his daughter upstairs who hears the commotion and raises the alarm more broadly. With shots fired, Blood and his gang attempt to make a run for one of the tower gates, but eventually are overpowered by the guards. Blood and his son are held in a prison cell at the infamous tower with many believing that their heads are consigned to the chopping block. However, Blood has other ideas. At this point, it takes a really strange twist in this story. He demands for an audience with King Charles II. He says he has vital information for him and miraculously, this audience is given. We don't know exactly what went on during this audience, but whatever was said was enough to have Colonel Blood freed. To the surprise of many, Blood is also given land in Ireland worth £500 a year, a substantial amount of money in the mid-17th century. So one of the really sad parts of this story is the figure of Talbot Edwards himself, who was so viciously attacked by Colonel Blood and his accomplices. 
King Charles II promised him a reward of 300 pounds, but it seems he never actually received that award. Edwards dies three years after the incident in 1674. His death most likely hastened by his wounds. His tomb rests in the chapel of St. Peter's ad vincula, located within the tower walls. Blood would go on to supply his services to the government as a spy, but would later find himself once again back behind bars. Shortly after his release, on the 24th of August 1680, at his home in Westminster, Colonel Thomas Blood would draw his last breath. He was 62 years old. Today, the crown jewels still lie at the Tower of London, and Colonel Thomas Blood remains the only person in history that ever dared to steal them.